I very recently had a whole week to thoroughly enjoy the new 2022 GPX FSE 300, so I wanted to share what I thought of it. I've also spent time on the previous FSE 250 and the new FSE 450, so in my mind while I was riding it, I was comparing it to those, but I also got to ride it back to back with a 2022 KTM 500, so I couldn't help but compare it to that as well. The first time I rode a GPX was the FSE 250. For the most part, it was an excellent experience, and I actually considered straight up buying one afterward, but there were a handful of real annoyances that I couldn't get over and didn't want to have to deal with. The ignition key switch was located right next to where my right knee would grab the bike while standing, and on hard landings, my knee would press in the plastics, tank, and seat hard enough that it would make contact with the key, and on occasion, the bike would get turned off right when I was landing a jump, and that was supremely annoying. Another annoying thing was that if I killed the engine by dragging the rear brake into a turn for just a moment, it would restart into a confused limp mode, and then I would have to turn the key all the way off and back on to get it running right. That was moderately annoying, but I could work around that by using the clutch when braking. But the clutch didn't like being used very much. It would heat up quick, and the free play swell was enough to require an adjustment after a hard section. Again, possible to get around by adjusting my riding. There was also the thing where when I would stack the bike, the side plastics would shed every time. So it was the combination of those issues that I just didn't want to have to deal with if I was buying a brand new bike. The motor was satisfactory and plenty quick for me, I just didn't like that it would float the valves instead of hitting a hard cut RPM limit. I have read that those NC250 engines were solid and wouldn't have an interference issue even if the valves were floating, but power shifting and bump shifting are way easier with a hard cut limit, so I did want that. The fuel injection was almost there on that bike. Throttle response was was snappy and it was mostly clean through various throttle inputs, but could have the mildest hesitations here and there. It was close enough that I wouldn't have cared about dialing it in much anyway. The suspension was also mostly good, and my only real complaint was that the forks lacked damping control when you were really smashing through varied, repetitive, sharp, high-speed, choppy hits. But that's something that I tend to complain about on most open cartridge forks. They just get out of whack when they start getting beat to crap when blasting down straights. So that was totally acceptable, and that was not part of why I didn't buy one. Overall, the bike was very close to being a winner at the price, but it was that handful of annoyances that steered me away, because a well-sorted used bike would be the same price, and if I was going to have to deal with issues anyway, I'm more well acquainted and comfortable with fixing the typical used bike issues. So if I did decide that I was going to buy a bike right then, it was going to end up being just another used bike, and I just... I didn't feel like just getting another used bike, but I couldn't justify getting a brand new bike that was going to have those issues, so I just didn't get anything at all. Next, I rode a GPX FSE 450, and those annoyances had been fixed, but I did not like the 450 engine. It was too sluggish and unlively for me, and given that it's a new bike and has such a large engine, I didn't feel like it should be sluggish and unlively at all. So I actually much preferred the NC250 engine, which was snappier, less flywheel effect, and was much more rev happy. It was just overall a sportier experience that I would have had more fun on. Finally, I very recently spent a week blasting around on the 2022 FSE 300, which is not just a big bore NC250, but a true NC300 with the dual overhead cam engine configuration. And dude, this one I would buy. The annoyances of the FSE 250 are long gone, and the 300 engine is good. It has a little bit of a bigger engine feel, and by that I mean a little more flywheel effect, 
and a little bit more weighty feel when revving it, but this thing lugs down low a lot better than the 250 while still revving out plenty and slamming into a hard cut RPM limit. The only thing I wasn't very stoked about is the new fuel injection. The tune is just not dialed. It was plenty rideable for sure, but it was in need of fine tuning because there were consistent issues that I wanted to tune out. You can hear it in all of the video I recorded. Anytime the throttle breaks open, there's a slight miss before it barks. Like it's just having a momentary lean out. It feels exactly like a carburetor that is a few steps too lean on the needle or a pumper carb with an improperly timed or lazy squirt. Even with the ECU map being in need of a fine tune, I got used to it and found the bike to be really fun. So if I owned one, I'd be hoping for some tuning support to come along, but if it didn't, I wouldn't be too upset because the bike still does what it needs to do. In the middle of my week on the 2022 GPX, I compared it back to back with the 2022 KTM 500 that my friend Tyler from the Everide channel has been riding, and basically concluded the KTM feels way more refined and dialed in, but isn't worlds ahead, at least at my skill level. For the price of the KTM, you could have the GPX with a spare engine alongside it, with two spare sets of wheels alongside it, and still have thousands left over to customize it to your exact liking. So while the GPX is by far not the best brand new thing you can go and buy, I do think it has a good value proposition going on here. For, for someone who wants a new bike but doesn't want to spend $10,000 on one. 